Okay, um, so I would like to welcome everyone back to the um, National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research meeting. And also a particular welcome to anyone that is just joining for the first time um, today on the phone or via the webcast. We are going to double duty this session um, of council and use this as a time to talk about the proposed reorganization for the Institute. Um, there's been some information out there on our website for the last um, four weeks or so talking about the Institute's thoughts and today we wanted to provide another opportunity um, to for everyone to hear from Dr. Green and for us to hear from you all if anyone has questions. Um, I'm going to speak for just a few minutes before turning it over to Eric to talk about the background and rationale for the proposed reorganization, but first just wanted to um, provide a little bit of context for why we are doing this today. Um, the opportunity for this public comment actually comes to us courtesy of the NIH Reform Act from 2006, where through the updates that it made to the Public Health Service Act, it wanted to ensure um, that the agency was providing appropriate transparency about any intent that it might have to reorganize for a significant reorganization of its internal structures um, by making sure that there were opportunities for public comment, for stakeholders to talk to the agency about any reactions to the thinking about any significant reorganizations. And so that is why we're here today to continue this conversation that we actually began on January 18th where we hosted a webinar um, to kick this off and we had um, what I think was a very constructive conversation. We had over 50 participants join that first conference call um, and they really came from across the spectrum of our stakeholders. We had um, members of universities and both investigators and others from universities um, that were participating, our professional societies, um, patient advocates, interested people just from NIH, both NHGRI and other institutes to hear what we were thinking about, and of course also from the media, and you may have seen some of the coverage that came out after that. Um, so what we're going to do today is just to continue that conversation um, and to revisit some of the background and rationale for those of you that may not have been able to attend the webinar. But before doing that, I just wanted to give you a quick recap of what we've heard to date um, through this process, both through the conversation on the webinar as well as we've received a few written comments that have come into the Institute. Um, not surprisingly, most of them focus on the rationale and the potential benefits of this proposal. Um, we also, not surprisingly, have heard many questions about what, if any, potential effects there may be on funding from NHGRI as this proposal goes forward, if it goes forward. Um, lots of questions about the proposed division of genomics in society. What are we thinking about in that regard? How might it be similar or different from the existing um, LC research program? Um, we also heard with regard to the science and the um, incredible need going forward for computational biology um, support and infrastructure, a desire from some in the community to, to see this explicitly addressed in our thinking, to understand what we were planning to do to try and address those needs. Questions about the relationship of the proposed research divisions with the proposed policy and communications division, how are they going to interact, again, how might that be different from what's been going on to date? And of course, interactions with other institutes and centers. Might they be different or, or the same, and how could that work? So I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Eric um, and just say that this, again, is a public conversation. There are people on the web. We don't have the ability for people on the phone to ask real-time questions, but I am monitoring the email address that's up on the screen now. And so if you send in a question, if you're not here in the room, we will read it and try and address it. And for those of us in the room, the way that we'll work afterwards is that um, members of the public will be invited first to come up to the microphone in the back and pose any questions to leadership that they may have so we can get those addressed first. And after that, we'll open it up to council for any questions or discussion that they might have. Okay? 